Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Happy Sabbath to everybody. How y'all doing? All right. You ready to get back into the word of Yahweh? Amen. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 23, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 56. Luke, chapter 23, the gospel of Luke. Hallelujah. Amen. You got your scriptures? All right, let's begin. Verse 1. And the entire assembly of them having risen up, led him to Pilate. All right. Luke is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom that were scattered among the Japhet Gentiles. Luke is a physician. <laughs> and so he wrote the gospel and called it the gospel of Luke. And so that's what it's called. Uh, but he's a Hebrew Israelite. And the scriptures are written to the chosen people, the 12 tribes of Israel, from Genesis to Revelation. The scriptures are a history book, not a religious book. <laughs> you have to understand that, and you have to keep the scriptures in context. That's why you have all these different religions, because they try to make the scriptures apply to their religion. But the scriptures are only written to, for, and about the chosen people. The scriptures are not written to everyone. And so that's why people are confused and deceived because they think the scriptures are written to everyone. But the scriptures are only written to, for, and about the chosen people. It's a history book, not a religious book. And so when you get to the New Testament, people don't understand the context, especially when the Apostle Paul used reference like Jews and Gentiles or Jews and Greeks. They think it's about everybody when it's about the two kingdoms of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. So, verse 1 says, And the entire assembly of them. They're talking about the chief priests, the scribes, <laughs> uh, the Pharisees, the rulers, the religious rulers that don't accept Yahweh Shai as the Messiah. The entire assembly of them having risen up. But some of them believed, not not all of them didn't believe. Some of them believed. And they led him to Pilate. So the ones that didn't believe, these are the ones that leading Yahweh Shai to Pilate, to turn him over to Pilate to be crucified, to be killed, to be put to death. Verse 2, And began to accuse him, saying, We found this one perverting the nation, forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, saying that he himself is Messiah, a sovereign. So this is what they brought the accusations against him to, to Pilate, uh, the ruling class preachers, pastors, and teachers of the day, the Antichrist church system. That's what they are. That's what they still are, then and now. <laughs> the religious folk that practice Judaism. Judaism is a religion. Yahweh Shai, Jesus, didn't have anything to do with Judaism. Anyone, anywhere, anybody can practice Judaism. That's why they are called Jewish. The people that have established themselves as the nation called Jewish in the land called the nation of Israel. Anyone can practice a religion. Judaism is a religion. So they're not of the seed of Abraham. They're not of the tribe of Judah. They're not the chosen people. The scripture calls them the synagogue of Satan. Since 1948, they did establish themselves as a nation state, but they are Ashkenaz, Khazarians, Japhet Gentiles, and Edomites that have taken over that land by fraud and deceit. The world accepts them as the chosen people. But according to the scriptures, all the 12 tribes of Israel are scattered throughout the earth, especially the southern kingdom of Judah with Benjamin. We're scattered the furthest in the land of our captivity. And so the chosen people of the Most High don't occupy that land. When they try to say that the scripture was fulfilled, that Israel became a nation state in a day. They're lying. That's not 
they're taking the scriptures out of context. That scripture has not been fulfilled. And so these are the people that are turning Yahweh Shai Jesus over to Pilate. They're antichrist. <laughs> they're against the Messiah. They're putting him to death. But this had to be done. And so that's why you have what you have to understand. Everything that's being done has to be done for the scriptures to be fulfilled. Yahweh Shai had to be turned over to Pilate. And even though he didn't do anything to deserve death, the scriptures have to be fulfilled. And so that's why we have to understand everything that's going on in the earth. It's because the scriptures have to be fulfilled. And everything that has been said and everything that has been done is to that end, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And so they, may, they don't even understand that what they're doing is fulfilling prophecy because they're ignorant. <laughs> they, if they knew what they were doing, they wouldn't have done it. And so they accused Yahweh Shai to Pilate. They said that he was perverting the nation. He was forbidding to, to pay taxes to Caesar. All of these are a lie. They're not telling the truth. Yahweh Shai is innocent of all these charges, but again, it had to be done. And they were saying, he, he's saying he, he is the Messiah and a sovereign, which he is. <laughs> he's not lying. He is the Messiah of the 12 tribes of Israel. But he had to give his life for Israel. That's what you have to understand. This being the Messiah of Israel ties into the deliverance from Egypt, the, the uh, Passover. And so he's the Passover lamb for Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. He's not the Passover for the rest of the world. He don't have a covenant with the rest of the world. So everybody that's thinking he'd come to save everybody, he don't have a covenant with the rest of the world, so he didn't come to save everybody. He's not the Passover lamb for everybody. He's only the Passover lamb for the chosen people. Everybody else are vessels of dishonor. <laughs> That's what the scripture says. There's vessels of honor and there's vessels of dishonor. Pharaoh and all his people were vessels of dishonor. All the people that's ruling over us, they're vessels of dishonor. The Japhat Gentiles are vessels of dishonor. <laughs> all the people that are not the chosen people are vessels of dishonor. Verse 3. And Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the sovereign of Yehudah? And answering him, he said, You say it, meaning it is said that I am. <laughs> and so that's how he answered Pilate. Because he had to answer him in a way that Pilate could understand what he was saying and so Pilate that's the question that he wanted to know are you a sovereign are you a, the sovereign of, uh, of Judah uh, of these people <laughs> and how was I Jesus said yes it, it has been said that I am that's correct <laughs> verse 4 and Pilate said to the chief priest and the crowd I find no guilt in this man I don't know why, why that's a crime. Why they want to hand you over to, to be put to death. Uh, I don't see nothing wrong with that. So he spoke back to the, the chief priests and the crowd, the, the Pharisees and, and the scribes, the ruling class, religious folk of the day, the 501c3 corporation, the Judaism religion. <laughs> he said, y'all, I don't know what's, what, why y'all brought him to me. I don't find any fault in him. Y'all wasting my time. <laughs> Verse 5. But they were insisting, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching through all through, through all Yehuda, beginning from Galilee unto this place. He said, well, he, he, he's a disturbance to the peace. He, he stirred up the people. He's called them riots. <laughs> from, from Galilee even unto Jerusalem. And so this is what they were saying to Pilate insisting that Pilate put him to death. Verse 6, And when Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked if the man were a Galilean. 
So when they mentioned that Howard Shai was uh, teaching in Galilee, he said, oh, is he a Galilean? He asked if Howard Shai was a Galilean because if he's getting ready to say if he's a Galilean, then it's under Herod's jurisdiction. Verse 7, and when he learned that he was under the authority of Herod, Herodias, he sent him to Herodias, who was in also in Jerusalem in those days. So this is during the days of the Passover and unleavened bread. And so this is the days that they're, they're referring to. It's a feast. The Passover is for the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not for everybody else. This thing called Easter is made up. It's something that the Romans created. It's not a part of the tradition or, or the commandments of, of Yahweh for his chosen people. He created the, the Passover. He told us to institute the Passover, to kill the first lamb, to, to kill the, the lamb and, and put blood on the doorpost and lentil. And because the deaf angel was going to come through and kill the firstborn of all the Egyptians. And he was going to pass over all of the 12 tribes of Israel. And so that's why we do that. Because we were in bondage, and the Most High was delivering us out of bondage out of Egypt. And he was going to kill the firstborn of all the Egyptians. And so that's why we keep the Passover until this day. And so it's for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why the covenant is with the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not with everybody else in the whole wide world. And so that's what they were doing. They were keeping the Passover because it's for Israel. It's an annual feast. Hallelujah. And then after the Passover, it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Verse 8. And seeing Yahweh Shai, Herodotus rejoiced greatly for a long time. He had wished to see him, but he had heard much of because he had heard much about him and was anticipating to see some miracle done by him. <clears throat> and so Herodias, he's not a Hebrew Israelite. He's not of the seed of Abraham. He's not of any of the tribe. Herodias practiced a Judean religion. He was appointed as a king or overseer over the 12 tribes of Israel, especially the southern kingdom of Judah, because of Rome. Rome appointed him. He is a he's an Edomite of Esau, and, or he's a, J a Japheth Gentile, but he's probably more of an a Edomite. Who's the Edomite? Esau, Jacob's brother. They start practicing Judaism. Those are the same people that have taken over the land today. They're Jacob's brother, Esau, Edomite. They don't want you to know that, but that's the truth. That's who Herod is. He's an Edomite. And he's taken over the land by fraud and deceit. He's, he's ruling over them by fraud. He's not an Israelite king. <clears throat> but he has authority over them through Rome. And so he practiced Judaism. Judaism is a religion. Some of the Jews, the, the southern kingdom of Judah, practice Judaism, but not all of them. The ones that practice Judaism are deceived because they don't accept Yahweh Shai as the Messiah. And so Herod, he had heard that Yahweh Shai was doing miracles, and so he wanted to see him. And when he finally got the chance to see Yahweh Shai, he was excited. <laughs> And so he thought Yahweh Shai was going to do a magic trick for him like he was some type of magician. That's how these people are. They don't care about righteousness and judgment. They just want to be entertained. Verse 9, And was questioning him with many words, but he gave him no answer. So Herodias was questioning Yahweh Shai just asking off the wall questions, but Yahweh Shai didn't answer not an, didn't answer anything. He he didn't answer any of Herodias' questions. He just kept silence. Verse ten, and the chief priests and the scribes stood accusing him intensely. So while Yahweh Shai was standing there, the chief priests and the scribes, the, the religious folk, the Antichrist church system, 
They was accusing Yahweh Shai before Herodias, saying whatever they wanted to say, even though there was lies. <laughs> but Yahweh Shai didn't say anything to defend himself. Verse 11, And Herodias with his soldiers made light of him and mocked him, dressing him in a splendid robe, and sent him back to Pilate. And so Herodias, you know, he was being trying to be entertained. He didn't care one way or another. <laughs> Because uh, he was the ruler, so he, he wasn't threatened by Yahweh Shai. So he was mocking Yahweh Shai. He said, oh, you a king? <laughs> you need a robe. Somebody go get one of my robes and put on it so he can be a king. So he was mocking Yahweh Shai, and he sent him back to Pilate. Verse 12, and on that day, Pilate and Herodias became friends with each other, for before that, they had been at enmity with each other. And so Herodias and Pilate, they wasn't getting along before this. But after this, they uh, buried the hatchet, whatever. They had confusion, animosity, a disagreement. They, they let it go, and they became <laughs> they, uh, friends again. Verse 13, and Pilate having called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people. And so Pilate is getting agitated now because he didn't find any fault in Yahweh Shai. He told him that. And then he found out that he was from Galilee, so he sent him to Herodias for Herodias to deal with him. Herodias, <laughs> he just wanted to be entertained. He like, I ain't got nothing to do with this. Send him back to Pilate. <laughs> So Herodias sent Yahweh Shai back to Pilate. Now Pilate is addressing the chief priests and the rulers again, asking them why they're bringing him back to him. Verse 14, and said to them, You brought this man to me as one who turns away the people. And look, I have examined him in your presence and have found no guilt in this man regarding the charges which you have against him. So Pilate is getting agitated because they they brought Yahweh Shai back to him. He already told them that I've already examined him and I don't see anything uh, that's worthy of death. <laughs> that this man is guilty and worthy of death, the charges that you've brought against him. So why are you bringing him back to me? <laughs> Verse 15, and neither did Herodias. For I, sent you, for I sent you back to him and look, he has done none at all deserving death. So he said, even Herodias didn't find any fault in him. That's why he's sending him back to me. So ne neither one of us find any fault in this man. <laughs> Verse 16, having disciplined him, then I shall release him. So when he said discipline him, that means they whip Jesus, whip Yahweh Shai, beat him. Because that's what they do when, they, when you're in their custody. They can do anything they want to do. And so they didn't find anything wrong, but they still whipped him and beat him. And the scripture says, without the shedding of blood is no remission of sin. So he was whipped and bruised for our iniquities, the iniquities of all the 12 tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 17. But he had to release one of them at the festival. So during this festival, the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread, it was a, 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 a customary for one of the prisons to be released during this time. Verse 18, and they cried out all together saying, Away with this one and release to us Barabbas. And so uh, the, the ruling class preachers, pastors and teachers, the Antichrist church system, <coughs> they cried out, to release Barabbas and, and, and put Yahweh Shai to death. That's what they wanted to do. Again, this had to be done for the scriptures to be fulfilled. Verse 19, who had been thrown into prison for a certain uprising made in the city and for murder. And so, Barabbas, he was guilty as charged. <laughs> he had murdered someone for an uprising. And 
So he was held because he had committed a crime. But these 501c3 corporations, the Antichrist church system, pastors, preachers, and teachers, the ruling class, they want to release Barabbas instead and put Yahweh Shai to death. And so that's how religions are. They, they just care about their religion. That's all they care about. And so they don't care about what the scripture says. Because if they had known what the scripture says, they wouldn't have done what they are doing. <laughs> Verse 20, wishing to release Yahweh Shai, then Pilate appealed to them again. So Pilate was listening to what they were saying. He said, y'all don't understand what I'm saying. I want to release Yahweh Shai. He ain't guilty of anything. I want to, because I have to release somebody. <laughs> and so I want to release Yahweh Shai. And this is what Pilate is telling these ruling class people. The, the 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system. Pharisees and, and uh, chief priests that, that don't believe the gospel of the kingdom. That Yahweh Shai is the Messiah. Verse 21. But they were calling out saying, Impel him, impel him. Meaning, crucify him, crucify him. This is all they cared about. This is their goal and objective. Because they didn't like him. He was ministering and teaching in the temple. They were like, who gave you this authority? <laughs> and he said, well, who gave John his authority? <laughs> So they didn't want to answer him about John, and so he didn't answer them. And so they they had been planning to put him to death for a long time, and then they finally got their opportunity. They're not going to just let this pass. Even though Pilate is saying, I want to release him, they tell him, Pilate, no, don't release him. Crucify him. Crucify Yahweh Shah. Kill him. Put him to death. Verse 22. And he said to them the third time, Why? What evil has he done? I have found no reason for death in him. Having disciplined him, then I shall release him. <laughs> Pilate said, I've already disciplined him. I don't find any reason to put him to death. So why do you want me to do that? <laughs> I shall release him. <laughs> so Pilate has been... Uh, consistent. He's like, I'm going to release Yahweh Shai because I have to release somebody. And he hasn't done anything wrong. I don't know why y'all want Barabbas to be released. And you know he killed somebody. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Verse 23. But with loud voices they insisted, asking for him to be impaled, crucified. And the voices of these men and of the chief priests were prevailing. And so no matter what Pilate was saying, they insisted, no, 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 no. We want Barabbas to be released. Release Barabbas and crucify Yahweh Shai. And so they got the people going and Pilate, trying to be just, he had to listen to what they were saying. Verse 24, and Pilate pronounced sentence that what they had asked should be done. And so he's like, well, all right, this is what y'all want. This is what you're going to get. <laughs> so let it be written. So let it be done. So he pronounced sentence on Yahweh Shai to be put to death. Verse 25. And he released the one they asked for, who, who for uprising and murder had been thrown into prison, but he handed Yahweh Shai over to their wishes. And so he did according to what they were requesting, that Barabbas be released and Yahweh Shai be put to death. Verse 26, And as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Shimeon, a, a Cyrenian, who was coming from the field, and they put the stake on him to bury it behind Yahweh Shai. And so there was this one man, and his name was Shimon from Serenia. In all the Christian movies, everybody is white, <coughs> so-called white. 
And then this so this person here is so-called black. Out of all the Christian movies that they show about Jesus, Yahweh Shai, this is the only person of color. <laughs> but all the people that are Hebrew Israelite, especially the southern kingdom, are people with brown skin, dark skin. They're not Caucasian. And you need to understand that. That's why people are, con are confused and deceived. Because it's been done deliberately to deceive you. All these pictures of Yahweh Shai painted as a Caucasian. And we're not knowing any better throughout the years through slavery. And now it's coming out that we've been deceived. And a lot of us are still deceived thinking Yahweh Shai and all of the chosen people are Caucasian. That's not true. <laughs> All the chosen people, especially the southern kingdom of Judah, are brown skinned, dark skinned people with woolly hair and skin like brass. Hallelujah. Amen. Just like Yahweh Shai. Verse 27. And a great number of the people were following him and women who also were mourning and lamenting him. And so the people that believe Yahweh Shai, that are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, the southern kingdom of Judah, they're the ones that are mourning and following because a lot of them believe that Yahweh Shai was the Messiah, especially a lot of the women that are mourning and lamenting. Verse 28, And Yahweh Shai turning to them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. So Yahweh Shai saw that they were weeping and mourning for him. But he knew all the stuff that was going on that had to happen. And he had to be put to death for all of the 12 tribes of Israel. But he's letting them know, look, don't weep for me. <laughs> weep for yourselves. Because the same thing that's being done to me is going to be done to you as, my, as the chosen people. You're going to be put to death. You're going to go through a great tribulation because of who you are, because you're my people. Yahweh yeah, is Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's Yahweh of a people, not a religion. <laughs> the chosen people. And all these religions don't like to say he has a chosen people because they want to be included. But it's exclusive. It's only for the chosen people with the covenant. And that's the 12 tribes of Israel, especially the southern kingdom of Judah. And so he's telling the people, especially the women who are mourning and lamenting, daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children because the same thing that I'm going through, you're going to go through. It's going to be a great tribulation. That's who you should be weeping for yourself and your children. Verse 29. But look, days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the bearing and wombs that never bore and the breasts which never nursed. Because of the tribulation that's going to come upon the people, the chosen people that are scattered throughout all the earth. <laughs> you know who they are? You know who they look like? This, this tribulation that's going to come upon all the earth, the persecution, the abomination of desolation, the mark of the beast, going to come up on all the children of Israel and it's going to be so terrible people are going to say blessed are the bearing and the wombs that never bore and the breasts which never nursed because no one is going to be spared from this tribulation of the 12 tribes of Israel especially the southern kingdom of Judah we're going to experience all of this tribulation verse 30 then they shall begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills, cover us. And the people that have brought us into captivity, they're going to be punished severely. <clears throat> and they already know this. Most of them know this, especially the ruling class. But they don't care. <laughs> they think they can get do whatever they want and get away with it. That's what they think. <laughs> but when Yahweh shall return... Everything is going to come full circle. And they they already know what, what their punishment is going to be. 
and Yahweh Shai is prophesying, and not only him, it was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 19 to 20, Hosea 8, 10, verse 10, chapter 10, verse 8, and also in Revelation 6, 16. It's, a, it's been prophesied. And so the ruling class people of all these different religions, they know what's going to happen, but they keep the they keep us, the chosen people, deceived, caught up in all these religions. That's why it's written that we should come out of her, my people. Come out of all these different religions. Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Catholicism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Seven Day of Venice, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness. Come out of all these religions. You're going to be caught up and destroyed with the wicked. Then they shall begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us, because they're going to be destroyed. And if you're with them, you're going to be destroyed with them. Verse 31, because if they do this to the green tree, what is going to be done to the dry tree? <laughs> Look, they're doing this to me and I'm innocent. I haven't did anything. But if they're doing it to me, they're going to do it to you too, speaking to the chosen people. All of the 12 tribes of Israel, but especially the southern kingdom of Judah. And so he's warning us and preparing us for what's going to happen. And he said that we're going to have to be prepared to give our life for the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 32. And the two others also, evildoers, were led with him to be put to death. And so that was, again, another prophecy that had to be fulfilled, that he was accounted among the, the uh, sinners to be put to death. And so that's, that's the scriptures being fulfilled. Verse 33, And when they had come to the place called Golgotha, they impaled him, crucified him, crucified him there. And the evil doers, one on the right and the other on the left, and so he was accounted among the, 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 the robbers, the, the sinners. <laughs> and that's why he was put to death for all the sins of the 12 tribes of Israel. The scripture said, curse is anyone that hangs on a tree. So he became a curse for all the 12 tribes of Israel that we might be saved, but that we may be born again. And so when the scripture talks about God so loved the world is talking about the 12 tribes of Israel that believe the gospel of the kingdom. <laughs> it's not talking about everybody else. He died for all of Israel, but all of Israel are not going to believe because we've been deceived through all these different religions. Hallelujah. Verse 34, And Yahweh said, Father, Forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garment and cast lots. And again, this was fulfilling the scriptures in Psalms 22 and 18. And so everything that Yahweh Shai, Jesus, came to do was to fulfill prophecy, to fulfill the scriptures. To, that's why he came. That's why he gave his life, shed his blood. And that's why he's coming back. For all of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's it. Period. Verse 35. And the people were standing, looking on, and the rulers also were sneering with them, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah, the chosen of Elohim. So again, these are the ruling people that don't believe the gospel of the kingdom, and all the other people that they've taught, that follow their teaching, their religious teaching, they're sneering at Yahweh Shai, saying, he saved others. Let's see if he can save himself, if he's the Messiah. That's the devil speaking through them. And that's how the devil is. When you're down, he'll kick you even more. <laughs> and so, they say, if you're the Messiah, you're the chosen, save yourself. Verse 36, and the soldiers were mocking him too, coming and offering him sour wine. And so, even the soldiers... Uh, Rome was mocking him. And they put a, a, a sponge with sour wine on his mouth. Again, this is fulfilling scripture. Verse 37. 
and saying, if you are the sovereign of you to him, save yourself. And so that's the devil, because the devil knows what's going on. And he knows that the scriptures are being fulfilled. And if the scriptures are being fulfilled, he knows what's going to happen to him. Because Yahweh Shai is going to lay down his life and rise again on the third day with all power and authority. And once that's done, the devil won't have any more authority at all over the 12 tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so he's trying to get Yahweh Shai to do something other than to fulfill the scriptures. And so he's tempting him even through his tribulation of, of giving his life, being crucified and put to death. Verse 38. And there was also an inscription written over him in, in letters of Greek and Roman and Hebrew. This is the sovereign of Judah, Yudim, Yehudim. And so this is what was written. It's like a, a burial uh, name uh, stone. And so this is what they put above him. And it was written in Greek and Roman and Hebrew. The sovereign, the king of Yehudim, the king of the Jews. And that's why that's, it was written. That's who Yahweh Shai is. He's the king of Israel. And so when he comes back, all of the 12 tribes of Israel are scattered. And we're two separate kingdoms until this day. That's what people really don't understand about the scriptures. All of the 12 tribes of Israel is one people. But we're two kingdoms. And it's a prophecy in verse, chapter 37 of Ezekiel that talks about all of the 12 tribes of Israel awakening. And they they're, they're take the scripture out of context when they say, okay, that happened with these people that's in the land today called the nation of Israel. That was that chapter 37 of Ezekiel pertains to them. That's a lie. It does not pertain to them. Those people that are in the land were never in captivity. <laughs> they were never scattered. They taken over that land by fraud and deceit. All of the 12 tribes of Israel are still scattered. And so Ezekiel 37 is talking about all of the 12 tribes of Israel waking up, the dry bone. And he's talking about the two kingdoms. The northern kingdom of the 10 tribes of Israel called Ephraim and the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin called Jews, Judah. And so that's how it still stands unto this day, this very hour. Even though we're scattered, we're still two separate kingdoms. And uh, the Apostle Paul was teaching in all his epistles. That's why he referred to as Jews and Gentiles or Jews and Greek. He was talking about the two kingdoms. But if you don't understand this principle, this precept, <coughs> then you don't understand the scriptures. You're going to take the scriptures out of context. And that's why people are deceived. That's why people have all these different religions and they think the scriptures are about everybody. But it's only about the two kingdoms of the 12 tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. Verse 39. And one of the evil doers who were hanged was speaking evil of him, saying, if you are the Messiah, save yourself and us. And so one of the persons that was being put to death was saying evil things to Yahweh Shai. And then saying, if you're the Messiah, save yourself and save us. <laughs> he didn't care what he was saying. He, wa he wanted to be saved. He said, save yourself and save us too. <laughs> if you're the Messiah, if you're the Messiah, you can do that, right? So... He didn't care. He was selfish, thinking about himself, really. Verse 30, uh, verse 40. But the other responding rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear Elohim, since you are under the same judgment? So both of these people that's being put to death beside Yahweh Shai are Hebrew Israelites of the southern kingdom of Judah. <laughs> he said, Do you not fear Elohim? Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You don't fear him. You are under the same judgment as he is. We're all under the same judgment. We're being put to death. 
and, and you talking to him like that, he's the Messiah. Verse 41, and we indeed rightly so, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this one has done no wrong. And so the other person that was being put to death understood that Yahweh Shai had did no wrong and was being put to death. And But they deserved what they were getting because they had did wrong. Verse 42, and he said to Yahweh Shai, Master, remember me when you come into your reign. And so... This is what the other person of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah, was saying to Yahweh Shai, who's also a Hebrew Israelite, of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah. When you come into your reign, Yahweh Shai, remember me. <laughs> because I stood up for you. I believe that you are the Messiah of Israel. Hallelujah. This is what he was saying. Verse 43. And Yahweh Shah said to him, Truly, I say to you today, you shall be with me in paradise. And so, Yahweh Shah understood what he was saying in his confession of faith and told him, Because of what you said, you're going to be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. Verse 44. And it was now about the sixth hour, that's around 11 o'clock, I believe their time, <laughs> what we call 11 o'clock, and darkness came over all the land until the ninth hour. And so what they're saying is there was the daylight, the sun was in the sky, bright, and all of a sudden it became dark. And it, it wasn't time to be dark yet, but the sun was darkened. And they said, all the land was dark for like three hours to the ninth hour. Verse 45, and the sun was darkened and the veil of the dwelling place, the temple, was torn in two. And so the temple is where the uh, Holy of Holies was being kept. And so the, uh, the veil of the temple was torn in two. The Ark of the Covenant was there. And so when Yahweh Shai was giving his life on, on uh, being crucified, the, the, the temple, the veil of the temple was torn in two. Verse 46, And crying out with a loud voice, Yahweh Shai said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. This, this was uh, prophesied in Psalms 31 and 5. And having said this, he breathed his last. And so the veil of the temple was signifying, being torn, signifying that, okay, you don't have to go through the temple to confess your sins. Now you can go straight to the Father. All of the 12 tribes of Israel, Yahweh Shai made a way for us to go straight to the Father to repent and, and turn back to Yahweh. Hallelujah. And so Yahweh Shai, he breathed his last breath, and he said, Father, into, into your hands I commit my spirit. Hallelujah. And so he gave his life for all of the 12 tribes of Israel, that we may have a right to eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. And everyone of the 12 tribes of Israel that believe the gospel of the kingdom, that Yahweh Shai is the Messiah of Israel, shall be saved. Hallelujah. Verse 47. And the captain, the uh, centurion, seeing what took place, praised Elohim, saying, Truly this man was righteous. So this captain, this centurion, is Cornelius. And he's in the Roman army, but he is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom that are scattered abroad. And so he's a part of the Roman army, even though he's a Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> a lot of people may not see it or believe it, but that's a fact. That's who this is. This is the person that Peter preached to that received the Holy Ghost. He, this is who they call the Gentiles. And the ten tribes of the northern kingdom were called Gentiles because they stopped serving 
Yahweh, the Most High, Elohim. And they started serving devils. Not all of them. Some of them still believe, like this, like uh, Cornelius, this centurion. He still believed. And so he's part of the Roman army. And he said, seeing what took place, he praised Elohim. And so no Roman soldier that's not a Hebrew Israelite is going to praise Elohim, <laughs> Yahweh. He don't even know. Yahweh, Elohim, the Most High. And so that's why this is the, uh, Cornelius, he's a Hebrew Israelite. And he said, truly this man was righteous. And so I had to point that out because people think this is a Roman soldier and he's fully Roman. He's scattered in Rome, but he's a Hebrew Israelite like us. We're scattered in all these different countries, but we're Hebrew Israelites. They may call us by the names that we're scattered in, like American or whatever. <laughs> but we are Hebrew Israelites. They won't call us by who we are. They've taken and stripped us of our culture, heritage, identity, birthright. Whatever they could take away from us, they took our names, our language. And so we're identified as wherever location where we're living. But we are the Hebrew Israelites of the scriptures. We're the biblical Jews, the biblical, biblical Israelites. <laughs> the scriptures are our history. It tells us exactly who we are and whose we are. It's written to us, for us, for us, and about us. It's our history. It's a history book. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 48. And when all the crowds who had gathered to that site saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. And so a lot of crowd of people were following the, the, the crucifixion to see what happened to Yahweh Shai. And after Yahweh Shai breath, breathed his last breath, everyone went their way. Verse 49, and all those who knew, all those who knew him and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at the at a distance watching this. And so all the other followers of Yahweh Shai, they was watching and they stood at a distance. Verse 50, and see a man named Yo Yosef, a council member, and a good and righteous man. And so one of the council members, uh He's a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the southern kingdom of Judah. <laughs> now, Yosef, and he's a righteous man. He believed that Yahweh Shai was the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. Hallelujah. And so he's getting ready to go to Pilate to ask for the body. Verse 51, he was not agreeing with their counsel and deed from Ramathium, a city of the Judah. You, Yehudim, who himself was also waiting for the reign of Elohim. And so he is a follower of Yahweh Shai. He's, he's a believer. And people want to say, the Jews rejected Jesus. <laughs> Some of them did, but not all of them. Otherwise, he wouldn't have had any disciples. This man is a, is a disciple. And all of the, uh, the followers are disciples. They're Jews. So people saying that all the Jews rejected Jesus is a flat out lie. Not all of them rejected him. Only some of them rejected him. <laughs> but we were still scattered because it, it fell on all of us to be scattered. Hallelujah. Verse 52. And he going to Pilate asked for the body of Yahweh Shai. And so uh, he went to Pilate to ask for the body of Yahweh Shai so that he could bury Yahweh Shai in a tomb. Verse 53, And taking it down, he wrapped it in linen and laid it in a tomb, hewn out of the rock where no one had yet laid. And so this is what Yosef did. He took the body of, he pleaded with Pilate. Pilate gave him uh, the privilege of taking the body so he took the body of Yahweh shot down and wrapped it in linen and then put it in the tomb in a rock where no one had ever been buried. Verse 54, And it was preparation day, 
and the Sabbath was approaching. And so the preparation day is the day before the Sabbath. And the Sabbath, they were going to uh, celebrate the, the unleavened, the festival of unleavened bread. So this is the preparation day for the Sabbath and for the festival of unleavened bread. And so that means that the Sabbath starts in the evening of what we call Friday around 6 p.m. or sunset around 6 p.m. and the Sabbath ends on the Sabbath around sunset which starts the first day of the week and so the, the preparation day so this mean this is like Friday evening the preparation day the Sabbath was approaching so this is uh, Friday evening before the Sabbath so what we call Saturday day Saturday day today this is the Sabbath. Everybody going to church or going to worship or a synagogue or wherever or building on the first day of the week called Sunday, you're in error. That's not keeping the commandments. He, he said, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. He didn't call us to keep the first day of the week. The Roman Catholic instituted the Sunday worship. And they'll tell you that they did. The Most High still wants his people to keep the Sabbath. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Verse 55. And the woman who had come with him from Galilee followed, a followed after and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. And so some of the women was following Yosef and saw where he laid the body of Yahweh Shai. And because they wanted to come in and bring perfume for his body. Verse 56. And having returned, they prepared spices and perfume, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the command. And so they got everything ready, because on the uh, next day, not the Sabbath, the first day of the week. And that's like uh, the, ev the evening of the Sabbath, around sunset beginning the first day of the week that's when they were going to go and so they rested on the sabbath they kept the sabbath and so it says according to the command the command of yahweh yahweh of abraham isaac and jacob it hadn't changed yahweh shah didn't come to end that we don't keep the commandments <laughs> he came to fulfill but he didn't come to get rid of it so if you think that, oh, you don't have to keep the Sabbath, then you're deceived. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.